and we'll cut this one. Good morning, it's the April 24, 2018, and I'm Mike Conway with the Arizona Geological Survey, and this is an Arizona Mining Review episode. And we have with us today Eric Mears, Vice President of Haley and Aldridge, one of the largest consulting environmental and engineering firms in the United States. We're in Surprise, Arizona, right next to the Agua Fria Wash, and we'll be talking today about some of the aggregate that comes out of here and what it means to the community. Eric, welcome to the show. Good morning. How are you, Michael? I'm very good. Just for a second, could you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I'm a geologist and I uh, actually started my career in the USGS in the Midwest. Okay. And so uh, I'm here with your brother. Yeah, um, right. But uh, today I, I manage the mining market segment uh, for Haley and Aldrich. Uh, we do uh, mining consulting right. uh, all over the world. Okay. And tell us a little bit about what's going on out here in the Agua Fria Wash. Well, this is, a, this is a battleground right now, Mike, and it doesn't look like it, but this is an area where we have some world-class aggregates that are sitting right. uh, in the ground, complements of Mother Nature, and we're looking for opportunities to extract those uh, aggregates in a way that uh, is friendly to the community. Sure, and for people that don't know what aggregate is, could you give us a real quick... Aggregates uh, are sand and gravels. And sand this and is, gravels. Uh, these are river deposits. Right. These have been sorted and washed and uh, cleaned right. uh, by the river and deposited here. This is where the aggregates are. Yeah. And so when we need aggregates to build uh, the community, um, this is where we have to go to get them. Yeah, West Pierce, a famous... Arizona geologists used to say that um, aggregates and, in, and industrial minerals as a whole were the sort of the, the, the bones and the sinew of modern society. And that probably is the case because this aggregate is absolutely essential for building out Phoenix and environs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every, every person in this community, even though Sun City is pretty much built out, mm -hmm. uh, this community continues to use aggregates. This city will probably use 10 to 12 tons of sure. aggregate per day or per year per person. And right. so just because a community is built doesn't mean that it stops using aggregate. So what makes the Agua Fria Wash a pretty good place to get aggregate? Well, uh, all the river systems in this part of the world are the sources for aggregate. In the state as a whole, <clears throat> about 85% of our aggregates are, are generated from alluvial deposits, river deposits. Right. In the Phoenix metropolitan area, I would bet it's probably closer to 95%. So. We come here for the aggregates because this is where the aggregates are. Right, and several years ago, and I know that you know this, the Arizona Geological Survey and Phil Perthree, our director, put together an aggregate resource map for Phoenix and the surrounding area. And we hope to be doing that for other <coughs> area communities as well, because that's kind of an essential ingredient is knowing where the resource is. Absolutely, in 2014, we passed uh, Senate Bill 1598, which was the Aggregate Protection Act. And the Aggregate Protection Act uh, requires planning organizations like cities and towns mm -hmm. and counties to start to identify and start thinking about the sources of aggregates they need to grow and to maintain their communities. Right. And in response to 1598, the survey was kind enough to help us by producing an aggregate map uh, for the Phoenix metropolitan area, which is a fantastic resource for city planners who want to know where aggregate resources are right. in their communities. And we get calls from other communities in Yuma and Coconino County. Flagstaff have called us asking us to do the very same thing. But, of course, the resources aren't always essential, are there for us to do that. But it is sort of an essential ingredient. Communities need to know where their aggregate resource is so they can manage that resource over time. Because right. otherwise, you have to truck this in. And there's some law about the cost of transporting aggregate. Yeah, exactly. You know, for every uh, 15 miles we transport aggregate, the price of aggregate doubles. Right. And when you look at how much aggregates are needed in a highway or a road or a hospital or a school, yeah. um, you know, having that price of that aggregate doubling and tripling right. is really, really cost prohibitive. Yeah. You know, California is a really good example uh, where they have uh, substantial aggregate limitations and they have, they have aggregate production districts in California. Many of those districts are, uh, don't have uh, adequate supplies and so mm -hmm. the average haul in California is over 50 miles, wow. which means that the price of aggregates is three times more than the price that is here. Yeah. And you got to think about all those truck trips, all those emissions, the wear and tear in vehicles. Right. You know, it's not a good deal. And right. so for us, with the adequate aggregate, like they have in California, 
but sure. just making sure that we have access to it and we can mine it in a responsible way. Okay, and the Agua Fria is just one river system or wash in this area that you guys, that's utilized for aggregate. Yes. And the others are? We got the Hacienda, we've got the New River, we got the Agua Fria, we have the Salt, and we have the Gila. Okay, so no shortage of places to go and find aggregate. And of course you have to work with the community. Absolutely. And there's a community surrounding us, and I don't know if that shows up well on this picture, this image, but there's a community here within uh, several hundred meters of us. Absolutely, and you know, the that's the biggest problem that we have is that we have encroachment upon these resources, and people want to have a nice view of uh, the, the, the river system, Right. but also we have to keep in mind that there's aggregates here, and those aggregates uh, need to be extracted for the continued growth and uh, sure. in economic health of the community. So we just have to figure out a way to balance the needs of the community right. for aggregate and the needs for people to have houses and uh, and to live. Yeah, basically. And these, the aggregate that we can see, and we'll show a, we'll show some shots of this. We're looking at it here on the ground surface here. This is just the surface of a river terrace here. And it seems relatively coarse, but I suppose when you get down into the into the deposit a little bit lower it gets a little more fine grain a little less cobbly well there's a, you know it's a it's a typical it's a typical alluvial sequence so right. you get uh, you get coarse stuff you get fine stuff this is a really good deposit because it has a great balance and so you need the fines to make cement uh, and uh, mortar sands and things like that you need the coarse to make a good aggregate that supports uh, structurally supports concrete and, and asphalt right right and these, ag these aggregate resources will be exploited and used for some time, and at that point, there's a remediation effort to try and bring it back into some sort of scope of its phys original physical appearance or physical nature. Right, right. So, you know, uh, mining is a temporary land use, and yeah. so we consider, you know, the operations of the mine as just another aspect of that, uh, the history of that land. And so reclamation is required on every aggregate operation in the state. Mm -hmm. And so all of the all the mines that are on these river systems all have reclamation plans in place. They have financial assurance mechanisms in place in case those operations fail. And the idea is to bring, uh, bring these properties into a productive post-mining land use. Right, exactly. Is there something I'm missing that you, you'd want to talk about that you want to bring up here at the end? I'm sure there is, but I can't remember what it is. You know, the you know, this is an interesting site because we have, this is state land. Right. Uh, we okay. have, we do have some competing uses for this property. You know, uh, there's, uh, there's some mining companies that are interested in this land for extraction, but the cities of uh, Surprise and Peoria have uh, uh, greater plans for the, the river okay. system itself. And so I think our job as, uh, as, as, uh, as miners and representatives of the Rock Products Association, I think our job is to find a way to balance everybody's needs and create a win-win situation. Very good. And just for people who may not be aware of this, Arizona's thought of the copper state, very rightfully so, about $6 billion worth of copper taken out a year. But the second most important mineral resource in Arizona, and typically the first in many states, is that aggregate resource. Absolutely. This is the economic driver of our community. Yeah. It's it the really backbone is. of American society at this. Absolutely. You know, we can't, you know, we can't build anything without aggregates. Our homes, our driveways, our schools, our hospitals, the roads, everything needs aggregates. And so to build on top of an aggregate resource is really cutting our own throats. Thank you so much for coming on, Eric. Hey, you're welcome. Pleasure. Good to see you. Yeah.